here at DJ's at. I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. It is the DJ Roundtable time, and we have tons of great DJs here tonight. As always, we have some uh, great people here, as uh, I always like to say, and always uh, count on them to uh, give their input on everything that we talk about and all the subjects. Uh, one of the things also I need for you to do out there, if you're watching this on Twitch, go over by YouTube. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube to everyone here who has a YouTube channel. What's that um, mean because I I closed it because I had some complaints which we'll I'll get into. It's a yep. long break. <clears throat> yep. And if you get a chance to follow them all on social media. If you're watching this on YouTube, the links are down below to their channels. Go to their channels, follow them, watch them. They have a lot of great information, gig logs, and a lot of fun stuff. And it's always interesting. So make sure also you smash that like button. Make sure you also hit the thumbs up. Or a like button, whichever we want to do it. Do whatever you want to do the like button, just put a thumbs up. Make sure you hit subscribe. And don't forget to turn on your bell icon so that way you know when we have stuff going on. Or if I go live on YouTube, which I have done that, to talk about stuff going on. So it kind of gets you in the uh, you know up in news and information on the show. Yeah. All right, guys. Got a question for you. Um first thing first. Uh, we all have small businesses. We're all small business people here. We don't have, you know, 50, 100, 200 people working for us. Uh, some of us have a couple people working for us. Some of us are part of a partnership. Some of us are individual, just small little DJ in, uh, you know, in the Carolinas that uh, does d d uh, DJs on the beach. Um, yeah. <laughs> the best DJ in the beach. And DJ on the beach. There you go. Well, and some people, you know, some people have a little bit bigger businesses, but we're all across the country. And one of the things that we look at is how to spend our money on advertisement. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm sure you're in the same boat I'm in. Advertisement can be something as simple as business cards. It could be uh, sending emails out to people, uh, talking to friends and family, saying, hey, are you having a party? Or it could be advertising on the knot, wedding wire, so forth, so on. The thing I have asked for you guys, uh, advertising is they usually have some kind of a budget. You have some kind of idea. Hey, I got to get business cards. Business cards are whatever they are, 100 bucks, 50 bucks, depending on where you get your, your business card, how many business cards you're getting. Or I need to pay for the knot, or I need to pay for this. How do you go about doing free advertisement? Do you talk to venues and get on venues uh, preferred list? I know there's a couple of DJs here who are on preferred vendor list for facilities, and they have a very good, strong relationship with those facilities. And I see those gig logs all the time when DJs go back to the same place over and over again. And they're recommended by the facility because they know the quality of service they get from it. So, my question to you guys are, how do you build that relationship up with a facility? And if you, when you walk in, if like, let's say it's like Hunter, who only does a few gigs a year, when he walks in and talks to the facility owner or the facility manager, does he introduce himself? Does he say, hi, I'm Hunter, or I'm DJ Cool Thing, here at DJ <laughs> X? Or is it like Matt walking in and say, hey, where do I load in, load out on? Uh, is it like, you know... Uh, like Jeff, does he make a do you make a phone call and talk to the vendor venue before you show up? How do you go about to build those strong relationships with those vendor uh, those venues and build relationships so that you are preferred vendor at that venue? So I'm going to go with Jeff first and ask you because again you do a lot of different multiple uh, events, weddings, you do uh, school dances, you do everything. So you're at a lot of different venues. How do you build those relationships up with venues itself? Well, I mean, first you've got to get into the venue um, to have a relationship with them. Um, normally, a venue will not want to talk to you if you ha are not playing there, uh, if you're not part of the uh, part of the gig. Um, but, you know, what I try to do is I, I talk to them um, before the gig, ask them, you know, about setup, what they require, uh, different things, you know, just be, get on their good side. Uh, I, I rarely go into an, an event, go into a gig where I don't know who I need to speak with 
at the event at, at the uh, facility. Uh, it's always good to know to have a contact person, and I try to uh, make contact with them before the event. And uh, you know, that, that's just smart business. Everybody should do that. Um, but you know, for me, advertising wise, uh, you know, I don't do a lot. You know, I've got a website that is a uh, uh, you know, it's basically a blog spot, uh, website, it's free. I built it myself and it does, does everything I needed to do. I've got business cards. I've got a, a retractable banner, uh, if I do a wedding show. Uh, so, you know, those are the things, uh, that I have invested in. I do not do wire or not. Uh, I do not feel like, uh, I get a return on my investment from that, um, for the amount that it costs, um, I prefer to just uh, use word of mouth. So that works for me. That's that's very, very good. And uh, I actually was talking to uh, my friend, Darren Lee, which has been on the show before. Um, and he just recently, him and his wife, uh, have recently stopped advertising and not because they weren't getting an ROI. Um, and they've built a very good relationship with a lot of venues. And I still advertise on the not. I pay for it because... It collects my reviews into one spot, which helps me out. Um, so that way I have a collection point because the knot is the biggest attractor on the web for wedding. And I get, do get a lot of business from the knot. So I look at how much money am I putting out per year versus how many weddings do I get from the knot? And we get quite a few. And we att we also track people to the knot. Uh, but again, it's everyone does different things. I'm not saying it's a perfect thing. Um I'm not trying to sell someone on the knot, but it's it, it's always good to have uh great things. Having a website's a, a you know good thing to have. Having business cards, even basically if you don't have a website, you don't have any social media, having business cards is an important thing. And I know one man who has business cards who gives them out, and that is DJ Cool Thing Hunter. He does also a lot of stuff with his church, he does stuff with friends and family. He's you know, again, a smaller DJ, but Hunter, when you talk to people. Uh, when you talk to go into a venue, whatever the venue is, do you talk to them? Say, do you introduce yourself? Do you say hi? Uh, do you tell them what you're doing there and that you're there to DJ at an event, or do you have a phone well, call beforehand, or how do you well, do it? Barely, well, barely. I had to talk to. I never talked to the. I, like I barely get to talk to the uh, people running the venue, but the people running the event, like the host of the event whether it's a family member or a friend, and then I just show up, I play, and never have to deal with that because they're barely in the venue. Okay. Do you, like, like, see uh, like with um, the Walking Mall Shrine Club, I was there a few times, and we never really get to talk because they're barely in there. It's, we never get to do that. We never have that stuff. So you're, you're saying well, most of the venues, you don't, you, don't get, you don't give a phone call beforehand, you introduce yourself, and have a point of uh, contact when you get there to the facility. Well, I, I only did that just once, and then the rest. Yeah, I think they just let us borrow the venue. They give us like the key or whatever to unlock and get set up and ready to go and have the have the event. For the time we we barely get to speak to the people of the venue, but of you know who is in charge of the event. Yeah, and it's interesting from uh, from uh, area to area how vendor owners and vendor managers work uh they just give you a key and turn you loose versus here you know they're they're on site and they're like you know they're at a point of contact i always give a phone call yeah south carolina is more super chill we're laid back we're cool they trust us i guess i gotta move to south carolina then. <laughs> no we have too many people as it is we want them to go back well, I, I'd, yeah, be a good, I'd be a good neighbor. I'd be a nice neighbor. <laughs> Hunter says, no, I can't move to South Carolina. I guess says, I got to move to North Carolina Yankees. with uh, Jeff. <laughs> you got to get him back home. We got too get many. Get those northerners out of here, he says. <laughs> <laughs> but I always give a phone call to the venue prior to at least a week before. Um, if depending on their schedule, like I have to call a venue for this Saturday uh, they're not, they weren't there to yesterday and today they're there tomorrow. So I got to give a phone call to them. I've been there before. Um, oh, I have the another thing, you know, another thing is, uh, how I advertise is through social media and by word of mouth, just like Jeff Johnson. I'm, it's pretty much word of mouth saying, Hey, um, 
like I did contact my elementary school that I went to school to, you know, as a kid, I, you know, saying if you need a DJ, let me know. I'll be more than happy to DJ for you guys. And they'll keep me in mind. There you go. And again, that's reaching out to, uh, that's reaching out doing the advertising. Uh, but I always try and get a hold of a facility and talk to them. I have a point of contact and get a hold of them uh, to get a hold of and talk to them about everything. So they know I'm coming there. Even though I've been there, I was there for New Year's Eve, so I'm going back there again. But it's it's one of the things that, we, you know, having that point of contact and then to get to know you a lot of times may uh, give you the foot in the door that you become a preferred vendor. Kind of like DJ Brantley. He's a preferred vendor at a couple of venues. The only vendor at Celebrations. <laughs> Celebrations on the yeah. river. Go on. We're in his Go. cape. Don't they forget should, he has to have his cape should, on. They should rename it to Greystone Manor. Because that <laughs> if you took six shades of gray and barfed it on the whole venue, that's what it looks like. Yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Yeah, gray and black. Well, hey, at least they had the gray bar motel. God. You guys uh, know what the gray bar motel that. is, right? Yeah, I believe so. Jail? Yeah. Oh, gray bar. Yeah. <laughs> the gray bar motel? Oh, now you see, wait a minute now, now. For example, in the city of Chicago, you know, lock up. Not that I've had much experience with this, but the, the bars were dark brown. And um, if I remember in Cook County, they don't have bars. Those are the sliding doors. Bars are a thing of the past. Those are cuttable. Those are breakable. Mm -hmm. Well, as, as if you watch uh, Blue Cam on YouTube, uh, lacrosse is on there and pretty predominant. Um, I should put a link down below just for them because uh, they're there quite a bit in your neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> some, uh, good cast of characters there, including a couple of frequent flyers have been on that that uh, yeah. channel a couple times uh, that uh, are interesting characters to say the least. And I'm sure that your uh, your law enforcement agencies know them very well. And yes, know, they they keep they keep them off the street as much as possible, and they go through the, the court system. So. Um, how do you, you know, how do you get the relationship with the uh, venues that you deal with and how do you keep them happy and how do you, uh, nurture that relationship? Well, first and foremost, with celebrations, for example, um, they're basically, you know, the biggest wedding conglomerate in the area. They have three venues that need three DJs, two to three nights a week, minimum, and, one is putting on the show that the couple wants. So when they go back to celebrations, you know, and give reviews, they're raving about how, how great of a time they had with, you know, me as their DJ at that venue. So when they started doing their VIP packages and preferred list, they, they talked to me about pricing and all that and put together packages for their VIP programs. But then... You know, and with that, ma to maintain that relationship, you always have to keep bettering your show, what you're doing for your couples, making sure that you meet, fit the demands of the venue. And a lot of people don't see it, the behind the scenes stuff, but every aspect of the day, I am I was, you know, going over uh, everything again with a, one of our DJs in the company on Sunday, and I'm like, to be brutally honest, you kind of got to be a, pro a proctologist of them and be up there, but every moment of every major event of the day. So you need to hold everyone's hand. You have to end not just the venue at that point, but the vendors you have direct working contact with. So if I have a videographer, I have a photographer. Uh, I'm definitely talking, if I've never worked with that photographer before, just like if I've never been to a venue, with the venue, I'm calling up, I'm touching base, I'm asking anything that could be detrimental to the party, noise ordinances, subwoofers, anything we're not allowed to do, where my loading is, what kind of power I have. I try to get the entire rundown, you know, the week prior to me showing up. With photographers, I talk to them, you know, I want to make sure I know what time they arrive. So if they're doing, like this weekend, I was doing sound check and the photographer didn't tell me she was doing first look. I'm like, how am I supposed to know you're doing first look when I'm setting up and you haven't said anything? But another story for that one. I was probably not the right DJ to be teamed up with them. 
Um, the name of the, and they were great photographers, but very strict. And they had a very holy name to their company name. So the very Christian folk didn't get quite work with me well. But with other photographers, I'm finding out if they have any lighting wants for me for spotlights. Because some will specifically ask, can you just put a bunch of white lights shooting down the dance floor and leave them static? Yes, I can do that. Others will ask for them off. And then I also want to know what time photographers and videographers are striking for the day. So if things run late, I can make sure that at a minimum we've gotten spotlight dances done, everything that they need in their coverage portfolio for the day. Videographers, the other step I'll take with them is like, hi, uh, I, what signals do you need from me? I can give you XLR, I can give you an RCA out, I can give you a quarter inch, but you're not taping anything to my microphones. So don't get any smart ideas. And with that, so by the time I show up, all the vendors I need to work with, we've talked, and now they're like, oh, he's professional. Then you have to show them you're that professional the day of. And by doing so, all the, like, and I don't want to sound cocky or arrogant with it, but when it comes to advertising this year, I, this year and last year, I've been super lax about it. I'll throw my social media posts up, but I'm not paying for ads or anything. Everything I'm getting now as my leads are all coming in as referrals or, you know, organic from my, from a Google search. So, and with that prior to getting to this point, yeah, advertising every venue I go to, I drop off rat cards and business cards. Every gig I take that's not at a wedding venue, more like my club gigs, events like Rudy's Car Night, I am putting stickers out in every spot I can possibly think of so people take them away and making sure that my name is in front of them. Prior to last year, though, uh, I was paying for Facebook ads. I paid for, I still pay for Zola. I take that back. I'll pay for leads on Zola because they're super qualified most of the time. And maybe I think I, I did a couple Google ads here and there, but nothing super crazy out, you know, with out-of-pocket expenditures. And the return, like I said, for you know, making sure every wedding I'm a part of does everything it's supposed to do and then some. Every, most of the venues I'm at regularly, they put me on their preferred lists. There's a couple of them that actually contacted me before they opened as an official wedding venue because they've been to a couple of weddings that I'd been the DJ for, and they were like, we're opening up on this date. Can we put you on our preferred list? By all means. I don't know what your venue is going to look like, but I'll take the referral because there's no such thing as a bad lead until you really go into the fine details. But, yeah, I'm up until you know two years ago, yes, I was paying for ads, posting on social media every day, going through all the wedding groups, you know, contacting venues after I'd been there. Can I send you more rat cards? And that's the other thing. Following up on all the venues you've been at. Making sure that if you haven't been there in six, eight months, hey, I left you some rat cards. You mind if I send you some more? Uh, do you have any, you know, and let them know I have some open dates that might be of interest to your couples. Just keep those open lines, those lines of communication open all the time you possibly can so they always look back at you. And, you know, one of the things also, uh, DJ Mikey Mike just came into the uh, chat. Um, one thing also, when you're doing all that, and you're talking to these different venues, and, again, you have your celebrations on the river, you have a couple of venues that loves what you do every time, uh, and you know the uh, the management there and the management staff there knows you very well and uh, will uh, basically you know, want to refer you there versus – you know, Bob's DJ, I don't know who, there, there, there's a Bob's DJ service in there. I'm sorry, but I hate to use his name. But I'm just use a, trying to use a generic name. But Bob's DJ service uh, may not give the same level of expertise, understanding. And, you know, there's a lot of DJs who take this very seriously. And there, unfortunately, there's some DJs out there who just want basically, quote unquote, beer money for it. And they don't take it seriously. They are like, oh, it's, it's I do whatever versus... Everyone here takes it seriously. You know, some people here have a regular job and they have to do this, but they take this job seriously. It's their business and they enjoy it. They have fun at, but they take it very, very seriously. I do this full time. I know uh, Brantley does it full time. Solstice does it full time. Uh, Hunter does it full time. Um, 
to others I, I don't but they still take it very seriously you could tell that by how they do things and i'm gonna go back to jeff on this uh, as someone who you know has both a business and works in the you know the corporate world uh i know you take things seriously because i see the quality of what you do in your work and stuff like that uh when you uh you know again when you when you're talking to people and stuff like that and you're on those preferred vendor lists and they give you a contact from the venue. They say, hey, I'm with, uh, you know, such and such venue. They they recommended you. You take that as, as as pride, correct? You take that as a thing that's saying, hey, you know, I know I did a good job and I need to continue doing that, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, it, any good word is um, from anybody is good to hear. Um, you know, my most recent... Um, uh, committee uh, wedding uh, just found me on Google search, you know, and, um, you know, I don't throw any money at that and uh, it's free. And uh, so, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, so some, sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes, you know, it's just, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta work real hard for it. And it's just, it's, you know, you can never predict it. It's, this is uh, very true. It's very true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not but no, it, it's good. To, it's good that, you know, you get uh, any uh, any venue that comes up to you and says, hey, you know, you did a great job. We'd like to put you on the vendor list. You know, that that's a great feeling. And, um, you know, whether you get any business from it or not, it's uh, it means you're doing something right. Um, you know, it, there's something to be said about, you know, who do you please, the vendor or the client? You know, that two different things there. So, uh, and sometimes they can be completely opposed to each other, but very um, true. Very yeah. true. So, so you got to watch out, but it, yeah, it, it, it's still, it's good to get, get kudos. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's always wonderful. And, and my other person who has a, a full-time gig and also a business and takes both gigs seriously, just like Jeff does and the rest of us do. Uh, especially DJing is uh, Mr. Dwayne Dixon, uh, who unfortunately was ill last week, but back um, 100% this week to answer questions. Uh, now, do you, when you go to a venue, do you talk to a venue manager or owner and talk about, hey, you know, uh, after the gig, hey, how do I get a preferred vendor list? How do I become a preferred vendor for your venue? Because uh, some venues may require you to do two or three times there. Or, you know, or, you know, do more than one time or, hey, you know what, we need to see what you are about, you know, and understand what you are. How do you go about to do that? How do you nurture that to make it into something that you become a regular at a venue? Well, I haven't got that far yet. So I just show up, but I do I check. To, yeah, Don't I, just, worry. I haven't. <laughs> I haven't got that far yet. As for, yeah, so I can relate. <laughs> Yeah, so I just show up to just make sure that um, I stay within their boundaries as far as sound or where I can load in, and especially what time do I have to be out after the event is over. But this last um, graduation party I did, I had a lot of people asked for <laughs> my business card, and then the bartender and the owner asked, asked for my information to help me come back. So I don't approach them. They usually approach me when I get finished. So, so I just got lucky that way. Have you have you have you followed up with the uh, the owner or the facility and say, hey, I want to make sure you got my information. Do you need business cards or brochures or whatever you have, whatever you know uh, materials you have to give them? Do you ever do that and say, hey, um, can I drop some stuff off for you so you can give out to your clients? So you don't have to. Oh yeah, here's a sheet of paper with an information on here. Oh, here's a business card to give out. A little card holder. No, nope, because it's only been a couple of weeks, so I haven't got back to them. It's like I'm so busy. It's like it's on to the next one, so I haven't really got a chance to go back. <laughs> when you get a chance to, uh, if you take a few minutes, give them a call, and if they want some business cards, you can order on Amazon the little plastic card holders. Say, hey, I can give you a card holder with a stack of cards. You can put it in there when clients come in. Say, hey, this guy was here. He's awesome. That way, they're not trying to keep track because all of a sudden they write it down somewhere and they're like, uh, yeah, where's that piece of paper at? Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> and that's one thing you don't want. Uh, the other thing also I have like in my hand here, this is from the wedding show I just did, um, is making sure you keep, you know, contact those people, uh, timely matter. Actually, I just did today. I sent a text message to everyone through our system 
uh, contacting them about setting up meetings. And that right there is another thing is that knowing the venues that you're going to and seeing that on there, we, we ask, you know, of course, name and inf information, but the venue and it's venues that we know, especially venues we've been to before, when I talk to the client, I can say, okay, fine, great. Here, look at these pictures. We've been there and talk to the management, especially your preferred vendor. It's a great thing to have in your hat when you walk in there that, hey, look, I'm a preferred vendor. I know this venue very well. They, they look they look at me as an expertise, kind of like, you know, DJ Briley. He, you know, he, you know, you know, the place on the river, a uh, certain place on the river. Uh, what's that place again called on the river, huh? Celebrations. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but, you know, like celebrations, he's always there because, again, he's preferred vendor. And he's at a few other places. It's just one of the things that keeping that up and make sure you pound home to the people. Hey, look, they have me preferred for a reason. It's great. And again, keeping those relationship with that venue and that manager, the owner of the facility is to me is very important to do. DJ Salsa is Matt. Uh, I know in California, you have a lot of different things going on. You have a lot of vineyards, you have, you know, museums, yeah. you have mansions, you have, you know, parks, you have wherever you have a, you know, a wedding at, or again, you've done school events as well. It's like Jeff and uh, Dwayne. Uh, what do you usually do to uh, talk to uh, a facility manager or, or venue owner? Um, well, we're only on one preferred list. Um, well, technically two, I guess. Um, it's not like around here, people are very specific with what they want for their wedding. So very few venues require you or even really push their vendor list as, you know, besides, uh, oh, here's some of the vendors that have been here before. But like I've stolen clients from preferred vendors before because what they offer is just not good, um, including one that's like at a new venue and it's him and one other person that are the preferred DJs. And I had a client reach out to him and reach out to me and they booked with me because what we offer, they don't. So um I think people are very like, that's why I don't care. Like I don't try to mooch at any venue. I don't, I'm not good at that anyway. Like I come in and provide an awesome show. And if whoever's running the venue happens to remember me, great. If not, that's the other thing is typically whoever the manager, whatever in charge has no say in anything. And uh, they're just, you know, the venues I come to, you're not talking with the owner or, uh, the man, like the social media person or whoever manages their website, you're just dealing with whoever they have on rotation that day. So, um, but I don't know. I've, I, I've never tried it. Like I've never tried reaching out after a wedding. Um, the only one that we're on is because he saw what we offered and it was way different from any of the other vendors he had on his list. And he wanted to offer that to his clients as like, Hey, look, this guy can provide all this epic stuff you see in our posts. So uh, that's why we're on that one. But I don't know. It doesn't seem to phase me. Um, you know, I don't have coordinators that recommend me left and right. You know, 90% of my leads are organic traffic. So, you know, I'm, I like that. I put in a lot of work and I see the results and that it just is what it is. I'm not the nicest person. I know I'm not the friendliest. I'm not anything like that. I'm very cordial and yeah. my clients love me and I'm personable and funny, but you know, I, I don't, when I meet people, I, I've been told I'm, I'm, not the friendliest and warmest person. So I don't care. That's just me. <laughs> so it is what it is. Um, I, my product speaks for itself. So I don't you're, know. I know another you're, DJ who... You're, you're very sure of your product and you have a, you definitely have a product. Just like Hunter has a product as well. You know, he's the best DJ in the beach and in his area in South Carolina. Just like Dwayne, just like Jeff, just like, you know, Brantley, just like me. It, we all have different, you know, personalities and stuff like that. But we also have personas and we have, you know, kind of a, a product and that product we sell is the important thing. And, we, you know, you want to show it off, but also, again, building relationships with facility managers. I always feel it's a very important thing because it, it, it gives you an opening. Uh, DJ Mikey Mike said, I got a booking from a company in Kansas City, Missouri uh, for their office there in northeastern Pennsylvania. So that is great. And reaching out to you from the corporate headquarters to a local branch. That yeah, is good luck. awesome. Because good luck. Because Kansas City is one of the most dangerous cities in this whole entire country. I would stay yeah. with Kansas now City. The Taylor, now that Taylor Swift is in, invading it. 
<laughs> hey, you right. know what? Her and Kelsey, they're 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 dating or whatever the relationship. Like, I, I don't care. I, I already couldn't stand the Chiefs. Now I just won't even watch. I, well, I just, you're I doing fantasy football. football. I have to boycott football, football now. I, I, as a bear, as a Bears fan, look look how bad the Bears got spanked this past. The Bears are uh, always bad though. The Bears like that's something you can rely on. The Bears being bad year after year. They used to not be. <laughs> when I, I mean, was a kid, they were the great. Sorry, now Jeff, they're but... like, uh, <laughs> they put make me. I mean, make me want to pull my hair on. They let that guy keep my hair I, short. I do. I do have Adam Thielen though. I, I I I'm seeing some some positive uh, enforcement from him. So we'll see. Maybe the Panthers are just taking. Uh, they haven't been the Panthers since Cam left, and uh, they're in a rebuilding phase. But well, anyway, you know, um, there's a bunch of teams that have to see what's going on. Wait, look, look, shout look, out. At Black, look at the Blackhawks. They are doing bad. They haven't won a Stanley Cup in years. No, we're talking about um, a few years, but again, give them they're rebuilding again, and then again, he they're so to give you clarity, uh, Hunter, he's DJing in Pennsylvania. Their corporate headquarters is in Kansas City. They have a local office in Pennsylvania. That's where he's DJing at, not in Kansas City. Even even worse, especially Philadelphia. He's not in Philly. He's he's a small town. He's he's kind of like you. He's way from a big city. He's a smaller area, smaller population. It's it's more. Yeah, it, it you know the towns there are probably you know twenty thousand, thirty thousand people, forty thousand, a couple of them together, and they get farming. That you know it's 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 nothing really crazy. It's 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 a nice quiet area, of Pennsylvania. You might like it. Never underestimate. Some... Never underestimate the power of Taylor. I'm telling you what, it's, she's kind of like Ryan Reynolds. Everything she touches turns to gold. So I wouldn't be surprised if really. uh, Kansas City. Um, you know they've already <laughs> sold out for the season, but I mean <laughs> the prices of those tickets. If she's there, give me a break. She's going to be there. Be as her and Kelsey are dating, they're, she's going to be there. And she was in the yeah. He'll, he'll in the be the, the first person she'll write about when they break up. Obviously, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> who who knows? But, who knows? I'm not I, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't know. I can't read the future. But who knows? <laughs> Whatever relationship they have together, God bless. And Mike was saying they're they're a coal region. Uh, they have a lot of coal farm, uh, coal uh, mines in their area. So they're working class people. They're down to earth people. Uh, great, great bunch of people over there in northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, Journey is okay. playing here next year on a, on their 2024. So Journey is coming to this area in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah. But uh, Hunter, uh, what what's for dinner tonight? We got to play. What well, we got to play the game? What is Hunter having Bob, for dinner tonight? Bob Evans. This is the farmhand. Um, I forgot what it was called. Um, let me look at my phone here. Bob Evans down on the farm. Yeah, the, no, the farmhand. Uh, yeah, the farmhand biscuit sandwich fire, sausage, egg, and cheese. There you go. Bacon. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of Bob Evans here closed a long time ago. I had to go to like down to like St. Louis, and then in St. Louis has uh, Waffle yeah. Houses too, which we don't have here. Thank you. Um, oh, I know what St. Louis is like. It's a crap hole. We stayed there one night back in like 2017 or so. It was horrible. <laughs> so uh, Mike said, Taylor will be writing a breakup song, yeah, obviously. That's what she does. Uh, she has done that multiple times before. And Mike also said he's made venison, chili, and cheese steaks with onion and peppers. Ew. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm not. We I'm not eat, a venison family. He likes venison. Meats. Hey, we don't eat wild meats out here. Uh, I know a lot of people. My my uncle loved like uh, lamb, deer but meat. Not venison. Yeah, my my uncle loved deer meat. So hey, uh, I think I think Bradley likes deer meat. He's up in Wisconsin. Meat. Cheese and deer, deer meat. There you go. Antelope meat. That's what it is. <laughs> and then uh, of course his sponsor is Three and One Energy Drinks. Right there, you go. I'm getting a whole, I'm getting a whole boatload of stuff for the weekend. <laughs> there you Oktoberfest go. Oktoberfest and Oktoberfest and lacrosse. And you, basically, you're running for 24 hours for like what four or five days. Uh, Thursday I'm doing like six till bar time. Uh, Saturday, Friday six to bar time. And then Saturday, we haven't figured that out yet. It'll be the the earliest I or the latest I go, and it'll be six. It'll probably be a lot earlier. 
So Hunter, I know you said that uh, earlier that you had to unfortunately stop your YouTube channel because of yeah. a few people saying they did not want their video up there on your YouTube channel. Both of the um, clients. Sorry to hear that. And uh, hopefully, if there is there any social media you have that the public or people can follow you on oh, that you are okay uh, with? TikTok. TikTok? Ref, I'm not okay with. Facebook, okay. I'm not okay with. Instagram, I'm not okay with. Snapchat, I'm not okay with. We'll Threads, follow you I'm everywhere. With. X, I'm not okay with. And mostly the most public social so media. TikTok, TikTok, TikTok is your preferred platform. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you're what on TikTok? At DJ Cool Thing. At DJ Cool Thing on TikTok. All right, Hunter, so at, you should start your own like um, like uh, crit critiquing all the American cities. That would I think you'd get a lot of followers, man. <laughs> yeah, that would that would be like, hey, you know, this this town needs to do this, this, and this, and this. There you go. Mike Bro. says Rockstar Energy <laughs> Drinks and Deer Meat is delicious. <laughs> I know a lot of people who love deer meat, so I'm not going to get in that in the middle of the conversation because I'm a meat eater. Uh, I like beef. That's my preferred, but chicken, I love chicken. Um, but the thing is that I would not complain about uh, bacon either. Bacon is also a very uh, tasty. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, I know uh, deer meat is very lean. It's very uh, healthy for you. It has a little bit of uniqueness in the taste, and a little bit of uniqueness in the texture, but I've seen people take, you know, deer steaks, wrap it with bacon, and they have some good eating. So I'm not going to knock it one bit because they like it. Uh, next question here for the group uh, before, because we, we're we about halfway through, a little more than halfway through. Uh, next question for the group to pose this question for you guys. And I'm going to start off with Dwayne with this one here. Um, with it almost toward the end of the year, and again, we're dealing with, October in just a few days and stuff like that. We're winding down this year. Um, are you seeing anybody asking you for 2025 dates? I know 2024 dates are people are asking for that, but are you seeing anyone for 2025 yet? Well, no more than on wedding wire. Other than that, everybody has been, I've seen a lot of 2024s that I haven't seen in a really I haven't really seen too much 2020, you know, the next upcoming year. So now I'm starting to get out there. So I got a lot of um, gigs for like in the summer and next fall. So that's as far as I went. But then, yeah, but on Wedding Wire, I seen 2025. But then, you know, they just asked, uh, we like your your profile. Can you send us some information? Yeah, yeah can you send pricing? Yeah. Yep. How about how about you, Jeff? Are you seeing anyone request for twenty twenty five anywhere? Just one. Yeah, it was a. Um, let's see, it was an eighth grade dance I did uh, this May, and they said, "Yeah, we want to book you for um, for May of twenty twenty five." And I'm like, "Okay, yeah, that yeah, they misprinted. They they meant twenty twenty four. She's like, "Nope, no twenty twenty five. She's like, "I'm not handling it next year, but I'm handling it the year after that, and I want to book you for that." I'm like. Okay, I'll book it in there, but um, yeah, it's it's a way it's a ways off. No, oh, there you go. well, there you go. At least you got a book for twenty twenty five already. How about you, yeah. DJ Brantley? Are you seeing anything for twenty twenty five? I'm about at le uh, at least ten weddings booked for twenty five, and I've got a couple that I'm already in talks with for twenty six. Uh, so we'll see how this plays out. I when it comes to twenty four. I actually counted the number of Saturdays I have left that I can actually book. And the number was six that I have from January through December of next year. And that's blocking out 4th of July weekend, Oktoberfest weekend, and Mira's birthday. And also taking the first weekend of January off. So through the end of the year, I've got six dates I, will, I can part with that are Saturdays. And only one of them is in a, is in prime month, which is June. And I'm actually kind of like, why you know, be, racking my brain, like, why isn't this booked yet? It, it, it should, we're past June. This should be booked already. What's your problem, kid? Or, and so hopefully I'll fill that one date. But honestly, if I don't, I'll, I will just you know plan a club weekend of some or something. 
how are people still how are people booking in 20 like i don't even know if i'm gonna be alive in 2025 <laughs> like <laughs> tomorrow is not guaranteed like that's that's i i don't even i have one because it was a 2024 reschedule um 225 but like i mean i'm open to it but like if they want to book this far out like i'm gonna make the price so high that to make it worth it because like i i i don't know like i don't know if i'm i I don't know that's it's so it's so far out that like like i i look at if you're a year out booking okay you're in a good range if you're six months out still okay but like if you're past a year and it's not like october may april september like you you just i don't know i guess if you know what you want um and obviously bradley's in higher demand because he's the only decent dj in that area uh so you know uh it makes sense but there's i think that's the problem here is that it's such a la and orange county has so many djs that there's people still looking for october 21st i just got one today and there's still Good djs luck. bidding on it so there's still people like on facebook that are available like well i, I think i think that the djs bidding are probably the and i'm not trying to knock any djs or that but they're probably the guys who are may not be the best and because the good djs are going to book up quicker good djs who are know what they're doing how to explain to customers what they're doing are going to book quicker than the guys who have that uh cool thing have you got any hits for 2025 i know you don't get many hits but i know you get hits here and there not at all not at all and i only have one dj gig for 2024 and other than that i am not booked for 2024 or 2025 Time to start panicking. No. Here's oh, the here's the thing. I mean, you the only have for 2024 is a wedding. That's in September. At the end of September of next year. Other than that, I have nothing booked. You you will get more. I know you will. You you got some more this year. You you still got some more coming up. You will get some more for 24. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you pay attention to the current, and this is something that I spend a lot of time reading into and analyzing talking to venues about the current trend honestly is couples are booking a year or less out so and what my business partner and i are seeing in the company is that whereas 2020 2021 we were seeing our bookings coming in 18 months out now we're booking six to 12 months out for everyone except me and my business partner where we are definitely booking 18 months to two years out for almost all of our weddings. So that, and the trend in the industry being that it might just be that people aren't booked, ready to bite or, you know, sign up right now. If that, or they're booking other DJs because there's other DJs in the Mer- uh, Myrtle beach Conway area. And I'm not, I'm, and I'm not getting booked. So yeah, you, you got that uh, Southern uh, comfort just, DJ guy there. Southern. I guess, there. I guess it's just me as a DJ and I'm not trying hard enough. That I'm not good enough. That they choose. Oh no, out. you're good enough. Trust me, you're a good DJ. Here's here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a lot more. Uh, I always track the time from lead to contract signing. I'm seeing it much longer. It used to be one, two, three days. Now it's like two, three weeks. Sometimes a month. Sometimes two. Sometimes they're oh, I'll talk to my fiance and we'll get back to you. And then they set up a call a week later. And oh, we're looking to make a decision in the next couple weeks. And then it's just like. Like I, it's the, the the indecision. It seems like, or or maybe it's a good thing because they want to make sure that who they're getting, like they're getting exactly who they want instead of so, just booking with whoever the lowest price is. So I guess that's good, but it's kind of annoying. I had one today though. They reached out last night, booked in less than twenty four hours. I just got the contract and deposit ten minutes ago. So who some, knows, how, who knows but, how much longer? And who knows how much longer I'm gonna be a DJ before I just call it quits? So uh, uh, give you a give you a little heads up. That was a little off a little bit of that picture. Um, give you a heads up. I put a um, link in the chat for a CNN article that uh, says this is in CNN business. It came out a little while ago. Um, after 2023 wraps up, get ready for a spike in marriage, marriage proposals. And in the article, they talk about it um, that, you know, a lot of these people have been dating for two or three years since COVID. Uh, and now that uh, you had this whole bunch of people who started finding each other during COVID because they had nothing else to do, and a lot of people were dating, this is about the time when you start getting a lot of, you know, usually two to three years in, is we start getting a lot of engagements. 
So they're saying this engagement season could be a huge engagement season. Uh, DJ Probably Mikey good. Mike said that uh, COVID DJs bought all their bought all they all bought a laptop and used some free software and some cheap speakers and called themselves a professional DJ. Unfortunately, yes, there there's people who do that even before COVID. They did that. They're out there that uh, have no idea how to do it, and you know they they just go and do it and charge uh, like I said before, basically beer money and <laughs> do uh, a poor job at it. Uh, I'm not here to judge. Um, some of them are good. Some are really bad. But it's it's up to the the clients to see that, and it's up to the clients if they want to have them as their professional mm -hmm. at their event. Um, yeah, that's why I'm. Yeah, that's why I'm lucky to be a DJ since 2018. That was before COVID. Well, again, you're a professional. You're not a uh, uh, someone who came into it just to make some beer money. You actually enjoy it. You actually do it, and you have fun at it. Just like all of us here, we we take it very seriously. Yeah. Like I said before, this exactly. is not uh, this this is not play time. This is not uh, you know, hey, you know. Uh, uh, a uh, job that you could say, "Hey, I can I can phone in and do nothing." No, we take it very seriously. Oh, our craft. It's and the most stressful at. job I've ever had. It's the most stressful job I've ever had being a full time DJ. It really oh, is. Yeah. It's it's rewarding, but it's it's so stressful and it gives me so much anxiety. And sometimes I just I see people like there's a company that I know here that the guys are wonderful. I'm friends with them, but where ninety percent of my business is organic. 90% of theirs is from these coordinators and they DJ for the same coordinator every single time. So they don't have to post any content other than, Hey, look, here's dancing queen. I'm having a great wedding. And it's just like over and over every weekend, week out, it's one of six different coordinators. That's just like constantly feeding them more. And it's just annoying that like the client's like, Oh yeah, I'll pay whatever price you said. He's good. Great. That's awesome. Lighting. I don't need lighting. We have string lights. Like it's it's just that's what annoys me is but how much that work right there I is one, that is one of the things of getting into the coordinators, getting I into know. the venues and talking to them and you know and, and explain to them what you do and show not only show what you do, but being at professional level and talking to them and saying, Hey, uh, you know, I could do the same thing for your clients as this and get a little bit more of a light show than just some string lights above. And you know, I'm for price wise. You know, I'm I'm this price. This is the price I'm at. And if I'm equal or less or a little bit more than the other DJs, you know where I'm you know what you know what you're gonna get with me. So it's it's a communication with those people. Um also DJ Mikey Mike said to you, Hunter, you are very talented. So even yeah, Mikey right. Mike is saying that you're very talented. So yeah, right. Why, why, so why would you say that? If I was so good, then why don't I have many bookings? Because you need to market yourself. That's all. I am. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm, I'm doing the best I can. Well, one thing you might want to take a look at, and this, when I started in the lacrosse market and actually doing more weddings, one, what were the other DJs doing so far as advertisements and what was making them stick out? When you well, can figure out yeah, what yeah. that common denominator is, yeah, you most of them were, yeah, most of them were using when, wire the not. Because I see a lot of, like, wedding pages on wedding more in the not you can put up a free ad a free listing there no you can't anymore they ended free listings even really? even if i wanted to i don't have if i remember money. correctly they ended free listings they still have them on there if you're on there already okay you can't go on there and add another free listing uh if i remember correctly i might be wrong but i think i'm right because some a couple other people a couple of people told me that that they will not add any more free listings, but they, you know, they, of course they want you to pay. Um, you know, one of the things uh, uh, Zola is one of the ways you can look at it. It's, you know, it's a few dollars for a lead or it's or like, limited plan. it's like a hundred and some odd dollars for, uh, I, for a year. I just signed up for it. Um, I think it's a beautiful interface. Like I hope it takes over. I mean, I don't hope it takes over the knot cause I'm not about to, spend all these time getting reviews on there. But like in terms of interface, like it makes you look amazing. If you have good pictures and good videos, like the way that it's laid out and their font choices and the just browsing of the interface, it's really nice. Um, I don't think it'll ever grow to the point of what the knot is at, but 
I mean, I signed up. They give you 35 free credits when you sign up. So and even with that, I don't have the money. I mean, I got so much. To, we got so much to pay for, like movie and TV show subscriptions, music sub- uh, subscription services, and all that kind of stuff. That's the thing owning a business. You maybe you don't get a maybe you end one of your subscription services. Maybe you end something and you do something else with the money. That it, it, it's like anything else with a business. As much money as you invest into it, it's what you get out of it, and that's. That's the thing with the business. I can tell you right now, uh, I, I, we we invest a lot of money back into the business with advertisement because it's if you want the business to grow, it, it it you have to people have to know you're there. You can have the best hamburger at hamburger stand. You can have the world's best burger done perfectly, but if no one knows you have it, only a few people are going to eat it. There are some places that yeah, they're famous. They have word of mouth. They're always busy. It's taken them a long time. And the thing is that that's the other thing is that, you know, Hunter, I, I know that you do a lot of friends and family and you do a lot of word of mouth advertising. And that's, that's the thing is it's just keep at it, man. Just keep at it. Uh, M- Mikey Mike said one venue that he DJs at, he gets weddings uh, for 5,000 or less. I don't, I think that's what he gets paid, not the total price for the wedding, I think. Uh, and a friend of his gets weddings from 5,000 up uh, the, his average wedding is twelve to seventeen thousand dollars. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Where? Who said this? The Mikey Mike in the chat. Yeah, maybe he's doing one wedding a year, sir. The, yeah, he said yes. That's my pay five thousand. Who? Oh, five or twelve? Five thousand or less is his uh, pay. No BS. Whatever. Northeastern Pennsylvania, man. Uh, yeah, I agree. Nice. I agree on sources for that. I mean, if I, if I, if I, I have really to do, if I have to do five thousand dollars, like they're getting the kitchen sink and everything. Well, it's like six thousand now. But maybe still. it's time to raise your prices. If I raise my prices, I won't have work. There's a, you, never you never know. You never know. You know. My friends found, are so, you know, my friends are so used to a certain price that it's, I'm, it's scary to raise my prices. It's not even so much that. His, just... uh, his friend did a wedding. His cost was $37,000. Wow. For the wedding? His, his friend did a wedding. His cost was 37000 The average price for Chicago for a wedding is $62,000. I, I thought I thought you were saying that 12 to 17 is just what they pay the DJ. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh. He has three or four DJs and three uh, three guys for lights. Wow. He had three. He had three, four DJs oh. and three light guys. Oh, he, and his cost was thirty-seven thousand dollars for a wedding. Dang. Yes, well, just a DJ. That's what happens when you have three or four DJs and a bunch of light. Like I, I, I've seen some of the productions that like they do here in LA that like the Persian Armenian weddings do, and those are like hundred k, you know. But but they're rigging lighting from rafting points, like from rigging points in the ceiling and. You know, completely transforming a blank space into a a nightclub style. So yeah, that makes setting sense. up like three days in advance. Yeah, yeah. Like none of us like same day setup in three hours. Like you must have a an army to to pull off a, a massive kind of show like that. So well, you know, they always you can always hire One people. Day. One day you can always hire people. You can always get a nice big uh, twenty two foot delivery truck with a nice hydraulic lift in the back. To, Lift those uh, toadmatic, uh, giant uh, toadmatic uh, boards and stuff like that in and out, or uh, the huge LCD panels uh, move in and out. But again, it, it different markets, different pricing, different ideas. Is For it thirty-seven right or wrong? grand? I don't think you bring the toadmatic. I think you, <laughs> I think you step it up a notch. You got you got an LED wall in front and behind you for that price. Well, yeah, no joke. <laughs> <laughs> No, you you bring a you bring a small TV about the size of your phone. You bring it up there. Say, here's the TV. Here you go. Watch this TV here. Oh God. But All yeah, right, well, I, think, I got I got to call at seven, so I got to hop off here. Uh, no problem, guy. Uh, no problem. Quick, See you later, real Matt. Quick. Enjoy yourself. Real quick though, um, two shout outs. One in the negative. Don't order from Full Compass because they can't seem to keep track of their products. Uh, Second, order from Gear Club Direct instead. You can text a guy there and order everything. I had my my white DB technology speakers that Full Compass said they shipped, 
from a freight company drop ship from DB, they got lost. And uh, so they gave me a full refund. And the other company I had spoken with the same day was a smaller company, but I'm like, oh, full compass, they're a big company, they'll handle it. Just three weeks of being back and forth with no answer. Finally, they're just like, we don't know where they are. And uh, so I'm like, well, just give me the money back. And so I went with this other company, they ordered them on Friday, they shipped them out today. I'll have them by Friday. So Gear Gear Club Direct, good company. I can vouch for them. I and I like uh Sweetwater. So Sweetwater, I I like their I stuff. I love Sweetwater too. I love Sweetwater too. The problem is when stuff is not in stock and it doesn't say in stock and you don't call and verify that it's in stock and then it's TBD. It's yeah, it's it's I always call my order in. I never order through the uh app or through the uh <laughs> the the online stuff. I always call it in. I have my guy and he's awesome. Mike says Z Zounds. Zounds is good yep, too. I love Zounds too. Oh, I use the good stuff. Yeah, I use Amazon and Guitar Center. Those are my main two for getting DJ gear. Guitar uh, Center. Canel and Canel uh, Light and Sound in uh, New York, another one. Uh I know if I know a few guys get stuff from them, Canel Light and Sound. They're another really good company too. All right. Well, I'll catch you guys later. Enjoy See you later. Uh hey. Yeah. Jeff, any uh, any place that you uh, you frequent for uh, equipment? Yeah, I shop around, but uh, B and H is uh, reliable, except when they're closed, and they're closed a lot during this time of year. <laughs> so, the, yeah, the holidays um, and yeah, they, they, they have a lot of holidays Sabbath. there. Um, uh, I DJ now is uh, very uh, very responsive. I've had some great uh, great uh, relationships with them. Um, and they have some great deals too. Uh, occasionally, uh, like my speakers, uh, two sets of speakers that I've ordered through them, uh, came, one came with the, um, stands, uh, really nice stands. Uh, the other set of speakers came with covers. And, uh, so, you know, they throw some stuff in occasionally. So it's, it's, uh, it's good to look at, but yeah, Sweetwater, I've ordered from them occasionally. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot out there, but I, I usually tend to, stay with the more reputable names i don't i don't go off you know to the, the nice thing with sweet water the, the badlands the nice thing with sweet water they double the warranty so they'll cover your they'll cover for twice as much so i i know dwayne's got some stuff from guitar center he's because you have he has some harbinger speakers but because besides guitar center is there any place else that you kind of get your gear from um we got um sam ash here and then I go to Sweetwater, Z Sounds, and there's another one. I almost want to say I DJ now. It's a it's another one that's that has their own little um payment plan if you want to go that route. But it's mainly um Sweetwater and or Amazon. That's the other one. That's where I mainly get my stuff. The one nice thing with uh Sweetwater, um they usually have, if you have their card, which I have their card, uh, they have a lot of special financing promotions and stuff. And you get 0% financing for like 24 months or 36 months on stuff. And you, I always pay it off beforehand, but it's nice to have that uh, extra cushion there uh, just in case. So, but with that said, we, we've come to the end of an hour already. Man, the time goes by so fast. You know, we've got so much information here. And so much going on. And I know uh, DJ Brantley, he's going to hop off here shortly and take care of his little one. His partner. Oh, no. I got practice. She she can do what she wants for the next hour and a half. I've got three big sets this weekend. I need practice. Practice for what? It's, it's your I'm cape. You got practice. Make sure you get your cape on right, right? <laughs> so, uh, I'm working on a few little, yeah. <laughs> little trolls for my set this weekend, including Ooh. using the chicken dance. Because it is, you know, Oktoberfest and polka being, you know, kind of essential for part of it. You're going to get about, what did I clap it out, 15 seconds of the chicken dance before I loop the dun, 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 and do a drop. Yeah. Uh, so working all that fun stuff out. Yeah, I'm, I'm really trying to figure out, you know, six and a half, seven hours of dance and EDM. It'll be a whole lot of fun. So I've really, I'm really trying to prep for it. Mike says apple, peaches, pumpkin pie. That's what he said. He's getting ready for a wedding in two weeks. I have a wedding this weekend, wedding week after that, wedding week after that, wedding weekend. 
it's like continuously with every weekend is something going on. And that's the fun part. I know all you guys have other gigs come up. Hunter, you'll get some more gigs. I know you will because you're a great DJ. Uh, just hang in there, man. Uh, other than that, I want to thank you guys all for tuning in. Please don't be afraid to follow the channel. And please don't be afraid to follow, like, subscribe here on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube and the re on the replay. Uh, other than that, you guys enjoy yourselves and have a fun week. See you guys later. Hunter. Peace out. Peace out. Take us out, man. That's always great.